Johnny O'Neill lost his job as a storeman a year ago. Keeping pigeons occupies his time now. You have to put a lot of time into it, but then, I mean, time is cheap. Um, but the amount of money you put into it, you get a lot out of it. You might not get good monetary rewards, but you certainly get a lot of pleasure out of it. Now, yeah, here's another baba for you. Now, yeah, there's a smaller fella for you. Okay. Yeah. Now, hold him careful. Hold him careful. Now, for you. Now, what are you going to call him? The unfortunate thing about pigeons is they don't talk back. So what you have to do is you watch them and assess what they need. And all you can do then is give them what they require and hope that uh, they'll perform well for you. How do you fancy going to Skipper Lane? Each pigeon fancier has his own way of preparing his pigeons for a big race. Leo O'Rourke is a great believer in chickweed. Leo has been a pigeon fancier all his life. He picks the chickweed on his way home from his job as a security man. Oh, he's a granddad, then. Is he? Johnny and Leo live round the corner from each other. They share a common interest in pigeons. You there, Leo? I'm here, John. I'm doing a bit of a trick. A little bit of grains. Did you ever do this? Did you ever give them a few grains? Ah, yeah, I give a bit of lettuce, all right. This but I is wouldn't, a, I wouldn't oh, go out yeah, collecting it. Oh, oh, yeah, well, I do. I would get this down to the chopper ground. I think it's great. It's a, it's an old hand uh, thing. Green short in the mold and all like that. You know, yeah. helps the boards. Uh, you know, plenty of wording in the, the old uh, dandelion. Did you, did I did you get the first of lettuce? Did you? Oh, I know. I didn't see that fella there this morning. You're all in bed. But uh, I hope most of us is watching this. What about uh, skipper in this week? What are you going to ah. do? I think I'll have three for her anyway. Hope three, for the best. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going with the Yeah. Great, yeah, great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm leading for you. Well, let's see. Uh, uh, 26, 24, eight pints. Two races well, to I'm go. I'm afraid of Alan. Alan, yeah. I'm afraid, is going to catch me. I'm afraid of Alan. The nom is short for a bird nominated to win extra money or to win a trophy. Only one bird can be nominated from each loft. The Sheriff Street flats in Dublin's inner city an area with a very bad reputation. Eddie Moore has a reputation of a different kind, and that's his reputation as a pigeon fancier. Eddie's friends call him muscles. What's wrong with the pigeon? Uh, he's just heavy mouth. Sorry. Ah, he's not too bad. It's only around the neck. He's uh, the, uh, yeah. He's not through yet. Muscles and his partner, Tony Kane, have been very successful in the big open races. This has surprised the rest of the pigeon men. After all, they have gardens, they have bigger and better lofts, and they don't have to cart everything up onto a roof. Ex-soccer international Paddy Ambrose is one of the big names in pigeon racing. He is curious about the success Muscles is having and he's come along to have a look at his loft. Hey, uh, Listen, man, let's see these pigeons that you're... Yeah. I'll show you this checker. Me. This checker that you've been talking about now yeah. was up on the fed. You know. Paddy is there. The only one that did happen for me this year. And the young boards and anyway. This was six <clears> fed. Six for, fed, First yeah. club. First club, yeah. He's uh, down through Stuart Cairns pigeons. I mean, Stuart Cairns? Yeah, yeah. Cost, you know, half and half. Yes. Yeah. Are, th are these off North Road birds now? Yeah, well, the, the, the parents flew North Road yeah. anyway, you know? Yeah. That's a grand pigeon. Do you handle that, John? Yeah, you've no problem with that building blowing over or anything like that? Well, it hasn't yet in any way. Huh? It's up here seven years, you know? Yeah. Well, I noticed the pigeons coming in from training there. That uh, 
They were landing on, is that Jimmy Delaney's loft? Yeah, that's Jimmy's, yeah. Yeah, they got a great drop here. You have a colossal yeah. advantage compared to, say, the lads that are at more or less ground level. Yeah. I, yeah. I, is, I, that, is that the secret, would you say, or part of it, that you, you oh, get great it's, trapping? It's good trapping, yeah. yeah, but you can get a bad trap as well, you know, like... like... Yes, yeah. Boy, yeah. boy, it's everybody uh, that uh, kids when they're starting up is to keep a little record of people and that, you know. And you can go back now. Oh, we've landed in our club that goes back for years and years. He can tell you who won a race with 56, wind, everything else, which is very good. Very yeah, it's really fair yeah. off. And you can say, oh, yeah, you're on performances and, and who won the race. Now, we write down there uh, who won last, last week's race and the time and uh, usually the velocity. Yeah. And you can compare them and that. Sit down at the end of the year and... Oh yeah, you can browse through them. But no, when you're waiting in the yard for boards of a Saturday, uh, you can take down the whole book and you're going to maybe Yachel. And you just look back Yachel two years ago and you see the will And you can expect boards around that time, but they come before that. Yeah. But really, uh, well, I'll tell you, if you have great. 40 or 50 boards in your loft, you're going to have to keep records oh, yeah, to know yeah, what yeah. they're it's, off. It's, it's most important, yeah. most important. Uh, any of the big shot pigeon men, mm. all hands on that they recommend. Keep records, uh, ring numbers, Everything else, yeah. and you can go back then and look, say, what that pigeon was after. Uh, yeah, thing. well, it's, most it's, important, it, most it's important. More, it's, it's a stud book as well. Uh, it's a wonderful stud book as well, yeah. Well, any of the fellas now we've, we've chatted with and that, they all keep these. Yeah, uh, Blue Cock, I hate you, 84, S. 7, 1, 5, 8, 6. Is he all right in the fight, Star? Um, nice. Yeah. Well, you him or what? Yeah. Yeah, him. You can back pigeons all the way from ten pence up to five pounds. You can also nominate one bird from each loft to win a special pool. Winner takes all in this pool, so every fancier would like to win this one. There's been a queue here since the doors opened at 8 o'clock this morning. The fanciers are let in 100 at a time. They won't take any cash here for security reasons. The pigeon men first have to go to the bank to get a bank draft. Everyone who works here is a volunteer. Hey, I can't 
don't squeeze that one. That's the winner anyway. Don't mark that anyway, whatever. I hope you're right. We're going to point, are you? Oh, wait, it's so far. Over 8,000 birds are being sent off today. To encourage the birds to fly home quicker from a race, some fanciers use what's known as the widowhood method. This means the sexes are separated and the cocks only see the hands when they return from a race. The Federation owns two big transporters like this one. They have sleeping accommodation on board for the men who will look after the pigeons until they're liberated from Skibbereen tomorrow. It's now lunchtime and the pigeons aren't the only ones who like a drink. I think there's been a lot of young birds lost up the country, but the weather hasn't been right in some of the training tosses. I lost more training than I did racing this year. I got one bad bang out of Port Leash, I lost 15 pigeons. I've got one or two back myself, and they were caught under the wing. Now, you might have caught the heads when they were coming home, you know, or something happened, you know, or they hit a word or something, you know. We always got them back forward, yeah. I thought he was getting his way with a sneaky toss last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, I went to. Uh, <laughs> I took a few boards, I took a few baby ones away with them. They'd only had three tosses. They were in um, East Wall. I brought them down to Nice and then into the Curra. So I said I'd take them to Wexford. So I brought 14 and all. I let the seven young ones out. I haven't seen one of them since. The older ones came all right, so I didn't get away with my sneaky toss. <laughs> <laughs> If this fella comes into a pub, you see, and he has a pigeon on a tin box, he puts the pigeon on the counter, the pigeon tap dances. So a crowd gathers round. I said, just that's brilliant. It's making me loads of custom, the barman says, you see. So uh, I'll buy the pigeon off you, he said. Much. 50 pounds. That's cheap, he said. Gives him the 50 pound. All night long, he has the pigeon on the box. <laughs> Top dancing. Great crowd around. Marvellous. Closing time comes, he throws everybody out. The pigeon is still top dancing. Four o'clock in the morning, your man can't get any sleep. Pigeon is top dancing away. He rings your man up, he says, how do we get this pigeon to stop tap dancing? Say, so take the candle out of the box. <laughs> it's now Friday evening, and the pigeon men must bring their clocks to be set and sealed with the Federation seal. After the race tomorrow, a thimble containing the rubber ring from the pigeon's leg will be inserted into the sealed clock. This will print out the race time on a roll of paper when a key is turned. Thanks. Thank you. That's not mine. I'll oh, bang it off, yes. 25. 625, yes. You got 25. Oh, you always put it on. Okay. Somebody has a key. Wish to everybody, oh, you wish to everybody, everybody you just stay quiet for about two or three minutes. Everybody stay quiet. Shh. Shh. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Get ready. Pull. Beautiful. They set each other's clocks, so there's no cheating. Uh, tea wedding, quest tea wedding. Yeah, I'll take. Yeah, will you give them that? Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful.